We're gathered here today, folks, on the Falls Road in West Belfast. Like many other roads across this city and beyond, there are families here who are increasingly having to make some very difficult decisions. You can walk a few hundred yards in any direction, and behind the closed doors of the poverty-stricken communities that you would walk, there are families who either can't afford a decent meal or have no way to adequately heat their home. For the past few months now, we've heard the words cost of living crisis, as though this is some sort of new development. So lest anybody think that this is the case, here's some facts. Across both the and Ireland, there are 1.1 million people living in poverty, 312,000 of them are children. We have 103,318 households waiting on a home, and you may wonder why this is, when there are 188,000 homes lying empty. In the 26 counties, 29% are living in fuel poverty. In the six counties, it's estimated that 50% suffer the same fate. And this is predicted to raise to over 70% in 2023. These figures were released by, by agencies north and south before this crisis. It is the context within which this supposed crisis is further developed. The poverty rates will get higher, housing demand will exacerbate, rents will go up and government statistics agencies north and south will record an increase in mortality rates as a result. We echo the comments made by comrades in the Connolly Youth Movement. This is not a cost of living crisis, it is a crisis in capitalism. If you need proof, just look at the income of the big energy companies as they continue to post record profits. They post these record profits because they continue to increase the prices that you pay for electricity, gas, home heat, and oil and transport fuel. They say that the increases are needed to properly reflect the cost of supply on the international market. Yet, with continued increases in the cost to you, their bank accounts continue as well. Something doesn't add up. EP Oil, one of Ireland's biggest suppliers, doubled its profits to $6.2 billion this year. The pay of BP's boss, Ireland's Bernard Looney, ballooned to nearly four and a half million pounds in 2021 after soaring energy prices transformed the company into a cash machine. County for own fuel cell LCC almost doubled its profits last year, up 87.5% from 2020 and still increased prices. The almost billion pound enterprise runs the local coal service stations. SSE Electricity, a major supplier across all of Ireland, posted three tax profits of 3.5 billion this year, an increase in 44%. The company came under fire in recent years for an alleged lack of compassion and disconnecting customers. For Million Energy, and this one stood out to me, their revenues from Ireland's core gas fee last year rose by 367%. That's your oil and gas, but it's their profits. And these figures are only a small fraction of the profits of all energy companies here. So if we're only paying for the increased cost, fuel on the international market, the wise of profits of these major businesses will be all seen in this. And given the governments across Ireland have consistently passed laws favouring the profits of big businesses and the super rich, you can be forgiven for thinking that politicians were firmly in their pockets. Indeed, business and politics here is structured in such a way that they can do whatever they like without any consequences. Little wonder then that in the last decade, a European Commission report found that 86% of those surveyed believed that corruption was endemic in Ireland. Across both the six and 26 county states, governments are firmly wedded to the economics of neoliberalism, consistently privatising public companies and the public workforce, favouring zero water contracts and driving down wages in real terms. Ireland is truly open for business and you're paying for it. If you're wondering what can be done about it, there's plenty. Countries like Bolivia have introduced direct taxes on hydrocarbons in 2005, significantly increasing income to the public purse. The following year, they nationalised the oil and gas sector, boosting the country's revenue even higher. Billions can now be utilised for public spending, investment and expansion of local utilities. The money will otherwise have been smuggled offshore in the tax havens in the pockets of the super rich, the CEOs of boardrooms, just like here in Ireland. That's the article leaves that all natural resources should be brought under the control of a 32 county socialist republic in order that those resources be utilised for the common good. The wealth created from those resources should be invested in public services, our health system, 
housing, education, food provision and more, targeting the complete el elimination of poverty and homelessness and de developing a society free from inequality. Both governments in Ireland have for generations now failed to fix the burning issues facing our people. It's only getting worse. And rather than deal with the core issue of capitalism and proper care, they call it a cost of living crisis. Nothing, I repeat, nothing that any neoliberal government does can fix this problem. It's always been here. They have turned communities into commodities and homes into assets. They are wedded to an economic system designed to suck every last drop of blood from every last one of us. Remember austerity, and before that, the recession, and that's the cost of living crisis. This crisis is just a precursor to an inevitable economic collapse looming large over the horizon. Be under no illusion that this is a war between the working class and the super rich, a war between us and them and their winning. Like the last crisis, those who control the markets are already planning an outcome that will best suit their class, and we must now do the same. A spectre is haunting Ireland, it is the spectre of socialist republicanism. Nothing less than a socialist republic can fix this, so let's fight for it. Right in the field, thank you very times, a crisis never seen before, but one that is also familiar. Our communities are slipping deeper and deeper into poverty. We're struggling to fuel our cars, paint our homes, struggling to live. In the midst of all this, vulture landlords will continue to raise rents, energy prices will continue to rise, and more and more people will slip into complete poverty. Our generation will be the first generation of young people economically worse off than our parents. Most of us will never own a home and we will inherit a dying planet. Our governments will point their fingers at the war in Ukraine, the impact of COVID and any other issue they feel will absolve them of responsibility. They will hide behind terms like the cost of living crisis to divert from what is actually happening. This is not a cost of living crisis, this is capitalism. Capitalism does not serve the working class. It is not built to carry us through times of crisis. It is designed so the select few can remain comfortable and live in luxury off, the, off of our backs, off of your labour. We do not control our labour, our wealth or our land. We do not get to decide which wars are waged. And we should not be left to deal with the consequences of those who do. Our politicians don't care about how many people are living on the streets. They don't care that you're having to use a food bank every week or choosing between putting petrol in your car or turning the heating on. The crisis of capitalism will not be solved through storming. We cannot rely on politicians and their empty promises. It will not be solved through demonstrations where we politely ask for better. This crisis can only be solved when capitalism is destroyed. When working class people realise that we hold the power to change things. We will struggle, we will work hard to serve our communities and build a future for everyone. The CYM calls the youth of this country to join the fight, the fight for our future and the fight for the working class. The crisis we face is capitalism. Believe us, we will defeat it. We will own everything from the cloud to the stars. Uh, we all know why we're here. We're here because of the devastation that's absolutely reaping through our communities. We know that those at the top clearly couldn't give two shapes about us. Uh, we've seen that with the budget that was brought in across the water by Liz Truss. We've seen that in the south with Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael, who tried to bring in their measly budget as well. We've seen it time and time again with the attempts at pay raises that don't even match any sort of inflation rate and uh, we're seeing it each day whenever workers are on the pickets whenever low-income families aren't able to decide whether they ha they're going to heat their homes or put uh, food on the table and we know for a fact that this system that we're living under isn't fit for purpose we know that the people on our streets, in our communities, in our neighbours, 
cannot go on like this. We know that the single mother in the Craigan isn't to blame for this. We know that it isn't the refugee living in Andy Town that's to blame for this. We know it's not the pensioner on the shankle who's to blame for this, but it's the ones at the top of, uh, of our community, I suppose, if you can call them part of our community, who are inflicting all of this onto us. We're seeing an, another fact that these oil companies and energy companies are making billions of profits we're seeing it time and time again whenever they're uh, out in the newspapers recording uh, about record profits that they're making. Yet we're left with barely any pay raises and if there is anything, it's mostly a pay cut um, due to the, the inflation rate. So we're here today to call out the, the general public on the streets um, to, to get them out for some action, uh, because it's the only way that we're going to make anyone listen to say that this is a different purpose and how this is going to be one of the dullest winters of many. There's so much preventable po poverty, there's going to be so many preventable deaths this winter, and so action needs to be taken. And we can't wait for those in Stormont, and that's why we have to take this action ourselves. And this is only the start of it. So I suppose we'll, we'll start do some chants. That's all right with everyone. Make people want to listen to us. <laughs> Freeze prices, not people. 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 Prices are rising, and so are we. Prices are rising. So 